Hey everybody, welcome into this video editing tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about color grading in Premiere Pro. For the most part, I grew up color grading, well, grew up. Recently, I've been using DaVinci Resolve to do color grading, but as Adobe continues to release more and more updates to Premiere Pro, the color grading capabilities of Premiere Pro are getting better and better and better. And there is actually an entire Adobe application called Speed Grade, which you can use for color grading as well. We're focused on the power of Lumetri Color to color grade in Premiere Pro. Let's dive in here and take a look at uh, this stuff. So basically what I've got, I've got a very widescreen video clip here. We'll mess around with a little bit, see what we can do with it. And then also I have uh, some uh, 1080p clips here, kind of the slider clip with this girl leaning against the wall here. And then I've got this clip that's very heavily orange. I don't even know what clips will necessarily color grade. And then this of a, of a trolley in West Philadelphia. So we're going to go through and have some fun with color lumetry. I want to take a look first at this wide angle time lapse shot of the sun rising. Um, so let's take a look at how we can color grade this. Number one, I want to go window workspaces and choose color. Um, this is going to open up as you're going to see, you know, it's the same workspace, but lots of different panels, including this very uh, prominent lumetry color panel over here to the right of uh, my screen. Now I'm working here on this timeline. I've got this clip selected. Um, in fact, I already have some lumetry color applied there. We want to delete that. We don't want anything on this clip. It's as if we just dragged it into Premiere Pro. Now, the idea behind lumetry color is we should be able to apply virtually any color correction, tonal changes, anything like that that we need. We should be able to do it all through this lumetry color uh, dialog box here. So it's pretty cool. Um, we're going to select the clip, like I said. Now, you do also have this option here, master, up at the top of your lumetry color dialog box. This is actually going to apply your color changes to the clip directly and not just apply the lumetry color as an effect uh, to the clip on your timeline. So pick your choice. It's probably a little more non-destructive to just apply it to the clip on the timeline as a color adjustment uh, or a color effect. So I'm going to just make sure I have BF BLVD time lapse selected. After all, that's the name of the sequence. So we're working down here on the sequence. All right, I'm going to go bring up my Lumetri Scopes, which under Window Lumetri Scopes is here. This is the default one that you're going to see. There are some others. I, I tend to like to have Histogram open as well because um, I'm just a histogram junkie. Um, the uh, vector scope YUV can be useful for determining uh, saturation and things like that across your image. I'm going to just close everything down though, just to leave the waveform RGB. Uh, we're not going to get into a huge amount of technical detail as far as what this is and what's going on, but you'll definitely start to see it moving and the R, G, and B components of it moving and shifting as we apply some corrections. All right, so we've got these sort of pods over here or panels. Let's double click on basic correction to open that up. We're actually really on like to single click it. You can import a LUT. A LUT is just a lookup table, color lookup tables. We've uh, I've done tutorials on them in Photoshop before. Um, and actually, you theoretically can export a, a color lookup table from adjustment layers in Photoshop and import that to Premiere Pro. Um, of course, you have some defaults here built in. Uh, there's also like Canon, you have Canon 7D, Canon 5D Mark III, uh, Nikon this, Sony that, all kinds of different color correction um, LUTs that you can use. And just to give you an example, if I apply this Alexa one, um, you can see it does this crazy stuff to my image, which is a little bit too much. So I'm probably going to set that back to none. But you can also browse and load in other LUTs from your uh, computer hard drive, wherever you may have them saved. All right. So what we can do is we can uh, adjust white balance. So you have a white balance selector if you're looking to select an area of the image uh, that maybe should be gray. So we can say, all right, maybe that building should be gray and it's going to apply some temperature and tint adjustments. I'm going to un uh, undo that. Or well, I'm just going to double click on each of these sliders uh, to reset them. By the way, any slider here in the Lumetri color panel, you double click on it, boom, it's going to reset it just like that. Um, so with this, what I want to do, I want to warm things up a little bit. And you can see here, we're kind of compressing the blues and greens and boosting the reds a little bit as we warm things up and maybe add just, just a little bit of green. So I'm sliding the tint into the negatives a little bit. And then you have all these tonal adjustments. So you can darken or brighten the image. Now, I want to be careful with this particular clip because it does go from near complete darkness up to the sun rising and glistening off these buildings. So if I boost my brightness too much, it's going to kind of make things go... Uh, uh, bottoms up, so we don't really want uh, we don't we don't want things to be too bright. In fact, I would almost rather it remain a little darker, a little bit more moody, and we just come out of even more darkness. That's great. Uh, I'm going to reduce contrast overall. I think that tends to give you more of a cinematic look. Uh, with highlights and whites, whites are the very brightest, whitest parts of the image, whereas highlights are generally the brightest bits of the image up until those very bright whites. I'm going to pull back on my highlights and my whites again, just because it tends to have this flattening effect where just kind of really brings detail back into all of your highlights and brighter parts of your image tends to give you, tends to give you 
a more cinematic uh, picture. But again, it all depends on uh, the shot. So shadows, of course, we can crush the shadows a little bit, maybe bring them down just a touch. And then I'll probably boost the blacks. I know you're thinking, oh, you just brought shadows down. Why boost the blacks? Boosting the blacks gives it a little bit of a fade. I'm not really looking for that Instagram style fade. I'm just looking to raise the detail in the very, very darkest parts of the image, but I don't want to do it too much. And then you have here a saturation slider. So, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Maybe I'll just uh, remove a little bit of saturation. Again, just shooting for more of that um, cinematic look. All right, so that's basic correction. As we move through here, by the way, you can turn on or shut off any panel by just hitting the little check icon. And you can see our uh, our little uh, histogram, not histogram, waveform here is going to respond in kind. Uh, in kind. Now, we also have creative. Now, the cool thing about creative is these are additional lookup tables, but these are more stylistic lookup tables. You know, instead of being specific corrections for a camera, you can see it's like, hey, this Fuji film effect, this Kodak effect, um, all of these different effects here uh, that you can apply. Now, I don't really like to use these, um, and if I am using them, I certainly don't like to pick them from that drop-down menu. What I like to do is use this little window into the LUT here, and you can just simply hit the arrow keys to flip through, and you can see there's a nice kind of flattening one. I kind of like that. Um, and you can just flip through and see if there's anything that strikes your fancy. Uh, maybe we'll just go with like something like this one. And in order to apply it, just click. All right, you can see it applies that lookup table, that creative lookup table. And then you can adjust the intensity. So you can really reduce it. Zero obviously is nothing. And then a uh, well, 200 is sort of, I guess, doubling the effect, really. Uh, I'm just going to give it a, a slight kick. And then you can apply stuff like a faded film effect. I don't really want that. You can apply a little bit of video sharpening or blurring. Uh, it tends to be kind of cheesy if you do any kind of crazy sharpening. So I would kind of uh, uh, counsel you advise you to stay away from that. Uh, Vibrance is going to boost the saturation and kind of the not so saturated parts of the image, very much like the saturation slider in Photoshop, where saturation is just a wholesale across the board uh, boost in the saturation. So if we boost the saturation, maybe we want to reduce the vibrance and we get this very nice kind of like pushing and pulling saturation adjustment. And then you have your uh, split tone effects where you can, you know, in influence or infuse some color into your shadow. So if I click down here, it's going to pour some blue into my shadows and I click up here. This is just like a classic, you know, we did dump orange into the highlights, you know, dump some blue into the shadows. I don't like that. Now, remember I said you double-click sliders to, to sort of reset them. Any of these circular effects, just simply double-click it, and it just resets uh, that stuff. You also have tint balance, so let's say you've got a ton of blue being poured into your shadows and it's just too much. You can pull back on tint balance to sort of have uh, Premiere Pro look at only a smaller section of shadows uh, in your image. All right, so that's the creative pod. We have curves. Curves is great. It's just like curves in Photoshop. You can select, you pull up, you add brightness, you pull down, you add darkness. Uh, maybe what we'll do here is add a little uh, darkening to the highlights and throw a little tiny bit of color into the darker points of the image. Uh, we can also select the red channel in which we can pull up to add some red to maybe the brighter parts of the image. I actually kind of dig that. And if we pull down, we'll just kind of pull this back into line. We don't want a ton of red being added to the darker parts of the image. You can select the green and the blue channels as well. I'm not going to do anything with those. Um, but uh, if you pull up on red, you're adding red. You pull down on red, you're adding cyan. Uh, you pull up on green, you're adding green. You pull down on green, you're adding magenta. Magenta is just the opposite of green. And then blue Blue is you pull up blue, and yellow is the opposite of blue, so when you pull down, you add yellow. Now, we also have this interesting hue saturation curve down here, which allows us to basically say, look, we want the greens, let's say, in our in our uh, image here to be much more saturated. So I could just click on greens here, and it's going to sort of apply some dots for me. And what I can do is pull up and say, look, all these greens, I want you to be very, very saturated. See how saturated those greens are? Now, if I don't like that, I can, again, double click, get rid of all my points. Uh, but you can do a lot of interesting things, like maybe we really want to crush down and, and not saturate the blues. We're reducing the saturation of the whole image because we only have one dot. So before you do something like that, you probably just want to apply a few dots to kind of cordon off the area in which you're going to be working. So we'll kind of crush that down. Uh, maybe we want to go ahead and boost the saturation of reds, pinks, oranges, something like that. Uh, and maybe I'm not quite digging the uh, the saturation of my greens, or maybe I want more saturation in the greens, something like that. So very qu quickly we can go in, and if I shut this off, you can see there's before we do curves adjustments, there's after. It's just some you know color changes based on or per color channel. It allows us to work in these reds, greens, blues, and you know even here kind of segment a little with, with a little bit more specificity. All right, so that's whoop, that's curves. Let's talk about color wheels. This is uh, really simple. Again, it's just do you want to add some color to the midtones, the shadows, highlights, right? Do we want to add pink to the shadows? Click over here. You can see we added a bunch of shadows or pink to the shadows. We can darken our shadows by just dragging this down, dragging it up, whatever. Again, double click to just reset these. Um, and again, midtones, you're looking to just brighten up the image or darken the image. This is a really nice way to do that. I'm um, actually kind of dig that. Maybe I'll add a little bit of red, reddish, orangish, uh, maybe more red. 
something like so. It's a little heavy on the color effect, but I'm not going to be too picky. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. You also have HSL secondary. Now, HSL secondary is really, really useful because it allows you to target like just the bits of red in the image. And I know you might be thinking, oh, well, Curves has the red channel, right? It's not quite the same. So under the key option here, we can sort of specifically select a portion of color. Like we can say, all right, select just the greens, um, and then we can expand kind of and get all the greens we want. So there's greens in all those parts of the, the image here that we see. Great. We can expand based on the, the lightness or darkness of those greens, all right, and also uh, based on the saturation of those greens. So maybe I'll get rid of some of this because I just want to attack the most saturated parts of the green, right? And you can refine that sort of selection, if you will, by denoising and blurring it. I don't want to do any of that. And then you can apply a correction. Like you can just say, hey, make all that stuff much darker or make that stuff much brighter or uh, maybe infuse some more green into it or pink or, you know, whatever you want. I'm just going to double click to reset these two. But you also have temperature and tint adjustments. So we could make the trees, let's say, a little bit more blue or a little bit more orange or a little more pink or green depending on uh, what you're looking to do here. Now, you want to be very subtle because a lot of times the the selection or the, the keying, if you will, it's not just going to be specifically in the area that you want. It's going to bleed out in some of the other areas of the image or the, the video still. So just kind of be careful how you use this. But this can be very, very, very helpful uh, to go in there. And I didn't even touch on, you know, all the little, the intricacies of, of how powerful the HSL secondary is. But very, very useful if you want to go in and do something like that. And then, of course, you can add uh, or remove a vignette. So this is easiest when you just reduce feathering. And you can see I can make it a very black vignette or a very white vignette. Uh, maybe I'll go lighter. I don't know, whatever. And then midpoint is going to just say, all right, how much of the image do you want the vignette to cover? And then roundness determines how close to a rounded rectangle or just a very big circle uh, the vignette is going to be. And then feathering is simply, hey, blur that vignette into place. I'll remove some of the amount, maybe make it a little darker, and reduce the midpoint, or I'm sorry, not the roundness, the midpoint here. So we kind of, or increase the midpoint, I'm sorry, so we pull it back to just the edges. You can see we can turn it off, turn it on. We apply this little vignette. Vignetting always kind of seems cheap to me, to be honest. Um, so maybe I'll just shut that off altogether. But you do have vignette options as well. So we've been working on this clip, and what I can do now is go to my effect controls, and I can see that this Lumetri color effect has been added to this clip. I deselect the clip. Well, the Lumetri color's not there. We're not affecting the actual original clip. In fact, if I drag this over a little bit here and go, go back to my project file, and I drag drag this video clip back in, we're going to have the ungraded version of it here. So we're not actually applying this color grading to that original clip. That's kind of important. Uh, all right, so I can just delete that. Let's go back to our graded clip here. So now that we know how to do this, let's go ahead and try to apply this, uh, this general effect or principle to another clip. Let's go with this clip here. Um, so we can do a lot of stuff. Obviously, we'll select it. I've got the audio track muted because it's kind of annoying. I'm going to make sure that I have the right thing selected. I'm going to go to basic correction first. I want this to look like it was shot very early in the morning. It was actually shot at you know five or six thirty in the morning um, but so I want it to be very cool uh, tones overall very cinematic so very low contrast we'll go and we'll add contrast later if we feel like it needs it but just in the total abstract this clip that's the goal make it look like it's a very cool cold harsh morning not really harsh but just cold morning uh, color palette so we're not gonna mess with any LUTs we're just going to go ahead and reduce the temperature you can see it's it's almost giving us a fakish blue tint so we want to be careful we don't want to go too blue and then maybe just pump a little bit of magenta into there as well. I'm going to knock back the exposure a touch, and then I'm going to really dump contrast. So I'm going to dump a lot of contrast. I'm going to pull back on my highlights. I'm going to boost my shadows. Just my shadows a little bit. She's wearing very dark clothing. I don't want that that piece of clothing she's wearing to begin to look, you know, like that Visco Cam Instagram style faded uh, tone. Not that I have anything against it. Maybe I have a little bit against it, but um, it's just not what I want for this particular look. All right, we're going to pull back on the whites. And maybe we'll actually pull back on the blacks just a little bit, just because we still want to maintain some semblance of contrast in there. And, of course, the saturation, we can reduce or enhance that. I may actually boost the saturation just a very tiny bit because I still want her skin to look nice and kind of uh, warm. I want the, want the wall and the ambiance to feel very cool. But the idea is we're trying to sell these these mantles, these hood, the, the hood uh, piece of clothing that she's wearing. Um, so we want it to still seem kind of warm. So, great. Uh, we can go to create creative here uh, and we could say all right we can shadow tint dump some blue into the shadow and then maybe a little bit of orange into the highlights but not really too much in fact I'm going to restrict here 
uh, restrict my highlights by just pushing the tint balance up a little bit um, and just being careful. I don't want there to be too much blue. Uh, just just a bit to really kind of, you know, keep cooling things off great. We can go to curves as well. Um, one of the things that we can do is target like the reds. We can boost the saturation of the reds a little bit. I can spread this out a touch. And then over here with the blues, what we're going to do is tend to desaturate them a little bit. Just that, that kind of steely gray blue look great. Actually, with curves, what we could do is pull up on the black point. You can see that that's going to also reduce contrast for you. Maybe pull down a little bit to darken it, and then pull back to the line here just to maintain some of our highlights, and then pull the white point down a little bit, just a very little bit. I want to be careful here. There we go. Cool. All right, we'll close curves. I don't think I need HSL secondary. I don't think we need to do anything with the color wheels. Maybe we could look at just reducing the midtones. It's such a beautiful darkening and brightening that this midtone slider does, generally speaking. Um, I kind of dig it. Maybe overall, see, that's just way too much blue. All right, we're just going to leave color wheels at that. And we could, at this point, uh, do some vignetting, but we would really need to feather uh, the living daylights out of it just so it really um, so it really is not at nearly as noticeable. All right, so we can just check this out here and just view our clip. And what I can do is I can turn the Lumetri color off. There's what we began with, and there's what we have now. So... I mean, you can see that it's it's obviously a very, very powerful feature in Premiere Pro. It's going to allow you to do so much, whether or not you, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to duplicate some older style of film or whether or not you want some sort of very lifestyle, bright, colorful effect or some sort of dark, moody look or some very cinematic effect. There's a whole lot you can do with Lumetri Color in Premiere Pro, um, and I think I'm going to be using it a lot more, um, certainly as Adobe continues to improve it. There's really no reason for me not to be using it more than I even am now. After all, it's right there. I don't need to export uh, XML to um, DaVinci nearly as much, and there's so much I can do with this tool right here in Premiere Pro. So it's pretty great. So for Lumetri Color in Premiere Pro and basic correction, color LUTs, uh, temperature adjustment, tonal adjustment, curves and wheels and colors and vector scopes and waveforms and every other bit of color correcting, colorist, video editing jargon that I can think of off the top of my head at this very moment. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.